Hello everyone, my name is Hugo, I'm the co-founder of Blazity and in this video we'll talk about loading fonts and the most important things that there are to know when you're loading fonts in your Next.js or React application. But before we get into the subject, um, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it will help you stay up to date with everything that we have to talk about. If you've ever had a web application, you might know how problematic loading fonts actually is. Regardless of what your setup actually is, there is probably a couple of things that you could be doing better and make the font loading experience more pleasant to the user and much faster. The first thing that we'll talk about is a property, a CSS property called font display. Now, font display gives the browser a couple of hints about how the font that you're including within the CSS should be handled. Font display has a couple of different values. Each of these values has two key characteristics tied to them. One is the swap time that's assigned to a font, and the other is the block time assigned to the font. So depending on your concrete use case, uh, depending on the font, depending on when are you actually uh, planning to load the font, depending on how important the font is to your web application. Um, if it's the main font that you're using in your app, uh, maybe it's a font that you only use for a very small subset of your app. Font display property can help you there uh, because using these two properties, being the swap time and block time, you can hint the browser as to how long should we wait for the font, how long we should block, and whether we can swap the, the font or not. The font blocking period is typically not something that we want to last for a very long time, um, specifically because for as long as it lasts, the text that's using it is not really visible to the user, which is a pretty bad experience, which is why most actually all of the all of the font display properties that um, that specify the exact type of the font display offer anywhere from extremely small block times to small block times even even font display block assigns a pretty small block time for the font to be um, loaded and rendered even explicitly setting the font display to block will give the font a relatively small block window, which is still longer than the other options. Now the swap period is the time during font loading where whenever we're waiting for the font, we can actually show a fallback, which as opposed to the block period where we don't actually see a fallback font face, or actually we do see the font face, but it's invisible. In the swap period, we can actually use a fallback font face before our actual font gets loaded, which would typically result in your web application showing a fallback font that it already has, that it can immediately display to the user. And as your main font gets loaded, the, the fallback font will get replaced with the actual font that you want. The best thing you can do is to familiarize yourself with the font display property, um, which value is best for your particular use case for each font that you're using will of course depend greatly on what your goals are and how do you want to prioritize different fonts in your application. But generally speaking, this is something that can tremendously improve user experience and should definitely not be overlooked. So another important topic is whether you should have your fonts locally or should you fetch them from some external source? Maybe Google Fonts? maybe somewhere else. Well, generally speaking, and not even generally speaking, I would say that it is always, every single time, a better idea to actually load your fonts locally, unless you're unable to somehow. Um, fo loading your fonts locally will always be a better idea because whenever the user actually gets your website or your web app on their system, uh, and they display it, it doesn't matter how fast the server that you have your font on is, it will always require a round trip. So whatever short period of time it would 
still take for the font to be loaded and to be shown on the user screen, we're adding that round trip time to all of this. So even if your font is extremely optimized, even if the servers uh, that you're getting it from are super close to where the user is, it will still never be as fast as serving the files together with your website, which requires zero round trips. Even if you're loading your fonts externally from something like Google Fonts, you already have your setup, you're very happy with it, um, you should still definitely consider switching to locally uh, sourced fonts. Um, there are a lot of tools such as Google Font Helper, uh, which we'll include down in the description that can help you transition from externally loading the fonts from Google Fonts to loading them locally. Um, and this is something that you should definitely consider because it will definitely improve the experience of your users. Now, the next topic regarding fonts is optimizing their sizes. What I mean by this is that you might already load your fonts locally, you might already be using the font display properly, but your fonts might be way larger than they should be. Now, why might that be? You might be using fonts that are supporting multiple different languages that might have different glyphs that you can use. Uh, they might perhaps have some even, even have some ligatures, um, but in reality, might very well be the case that your website or your web app um, only uses a single language. Or maybe even if you have a multi-language uh, multi setup, maybe every language has a, has a different font. Um, and if it doesn't, maybe it could have. Maybe you don't need a Arabic font for your English customers. Maybe you don't need Chinese symbols for, for your Arabic customers. Um, all of this can be optimized and should be optimized to make sure that you're serving the smallest possible font to every user. Now, there are multiple ways of going about that, um, since there are multiple ways of actually editing the fonts that you're using, and uh, especially if you're using them locally, this makes uh, things even easier because um, if you have them locally, you have a complete control over them. Um, one of the tools that we would recommend is font drop, which we'll link down in the description below as well, uh, which you can use to pretty easily just upload the font that you're using and make sure that it only includes characters that your users actually need. Now, last but not least, if you're using React, you should make sure that whenever you're loading the fonts, you're actually using a CSS file for loading them because chances are that if you use some kind of CSS in JS solutions, the solution, which are pretty popular right now, you might be loading your font within them, within something like perhaps um, styled components or emotions or emotions global style, uh, which is not very ideal because even though uh, the fonts will get cached, um, you will still might still experience the the flicker of the font whenever the website gets reloaded. And again, a solution to this would be to um, move the information about your font um, to a CSS file, which will get cached by the browser. And whenever the reload happens, we actually see no flickering and the experience is immediately better. So that's it for today in the topic of loading and optimizing fonts. Now, this was just the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot, of, a lot to talk about when it comes to fonts on the web. Um, if you want to learn more, please consider liking and subscribing. That will help you stay up to date and learn more about fonts on the web. Thanks for watching.